Welcome to my crazy life. It's Lori and we are going to make a fun little gift, treasure, you call it what you will. We are going to make a little charm to go on lip gloss. Uh, I made these with my cousins and we had so much fun. I love mine. I just love a good bling. And then I put this one on Papa. So any balm or gloss that has this tip you can use. So we're going to do this elf in vanilla today. These are at my CVS. They're four dollars for one. Now you can um, use coupons and stuff on them to get them less expensive. Dollar Tree has some but the 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 DIY I'm going to give you today is for this specific size. Okay, so what you're going to need is, and this can all be Dollar Tree, by the way, you're going to need a set of needle nose jewelry size. So the cutters and then the two tips. You're going to need some chain. This is from the Dollar Tree. It comes in the jewelry making kit. This was something that I rescued from uh, Mystery Jewelry you're gonna need some findings. And this little kit comes from the Dollar Tree. It has the little lobster claw, and it has these small little jump rings, and then you're gonna need one larger jump ring, if you wanna do it like I do it. I have all different, I have them in silver as well. So depending on what color scheme, I have a bunch of different size lobster claws. On this one, I added a hook, so this can go on to like a keychain or something. Um, you could go Christmas. So you need some charms. These are just your gold bells and then these are some Christmas beads that I got. Um, a lot of these beads here I just rescued off of jewelry or I've had the charms and I just tossed them all in this container to keep them all together. So this is, I mean this cannot be any simpler. Let me grab a pokey tool. You need a pokey tool. Now it can be, this is what I have for my Cricut. It's a dental tool, but you can also just use a regular old, um, say a uh, push pin. So, and these are just all my extra little jump. These are called jump rings and you'll need those. And if you don't have chain, you can just connect jump rings together. I've done that as well. Chains are just easier and faster. So we're going to take the pokey end of this. You're going to pick a spot. I like mine off to the side and not too, like, in the middle. So you don't want it too close to down here where your product comes out, and you don't want it where it's going to fall off. So about right there in the middle, and I just push it in and I made my hole. That's it. And then you take a jump ring. I like a longer one. And the reason I do the lobster claw on here is so it can be taken off when you're done with this lip balm. And then you just put it in there. I mean, oh, and we can add the chain later. So this is just for the balm or the gloss. And you just wanna close it and make sure it's flush and you don't, you know, you pinch it pretty good. And now we have, my lip balm has a hook. You can actually just leave it there, but I like the bling. So then we're gonna take our little piece of chain. This was just left over from a project. And I wanna attach my lobster claw to the end. So I'm gonna take a small jump ring. Now, oh, that was fun. The jump ring thickness needs to match the openings in your necklace or your chain. Like this from the Dollar Tree is large. It doesn't really matter what size rings you use. This is a little smaller, but I think we're gonna be okay. You just open them up. I take my tip. Of my, I add my chain and then I add my lobster claw right there and now I'm going to close it up again. I know you can buy these but it's so fun to make and it's 
really great use of a bunch of charms if you have them kicking around like I do. So now I have, that's gonna hook on to the lip balm and that's where all my beads are gonna hang. I personally like to start at the top and work my way down. I need to fix this. It's not quite closed. And if it doesn't, if it's not, the gap is not closed, your beads can fall off. That's all. Nothing detrimental. Um, and I also like to have like a focal bead at the bottom. So I think I'll do that down at the bottom. I can do a B and then one of these beads. So I'll probably do that one I think is pretty. And I feel like that's enough on this one. But you, I mean, I've got all kinds of beads that I can hang. But I like this setup. And then I start at the top. And I open my bead or my charm. This one is mixed metal because this has silver. I ripped apart a necklace that I didn't wear anymore to get some of these charms. Ah, sorry. My fingers are going to be in the way because I have to get in here. So I just went down two beads, three beads, three rings or links of the necklace, if you will, and close it up. Make sure we're together. Okay, so that's our first charm is hanging there. Now I'm gonna put my B and we're gonna go down two more. I like mine a little compact, but honestly, this is your own. Do it how you want. So then I say, okay, two more links. So that looks good. And it doesn't have to be exact, right? Cause they're gonna hang. Um, I just like it a little shorter and more compact, but like I said, that's me. Right, so now I have these two. And then I'm gonna hang, this leaf is gonna be the last. That's a thicker ring, so I'm not gonna use that one. I'm gonna use this one. And this kit at the Dollar Tree has all these pieces. I think this is a little too close, so I'm gonna do my leaf here. Oops, and then I'm gonna move my B. Ah, all right, sorry, there we go. And then I'm gonna put my little Monstera leaf on there. And this is a fun thing to do, even with the younger kids, because you can do the jewelry part for them. Now, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to fix. I don't like how close that B is. So I'm gonna take the B off and move them. Probably here, to the middle. Yep. Now, hi Alex. You can put as many charms on here as you want. Hi buddy. Or not. That's up to you. Now, you see this chain that's hanging off the end? I go to the very next link and I just, you can twist it off, I just cut it off. And now that is dangling at the very end. Right? Ugh, my fingers. Oops. Hi Alex, I know you're hungry. Hook it in there. And now you have a little charm hanging off of your lip balm. Now the next thing we're gonna make, hi buddy, is we're gonna make a box just to gift these in, a paper box. I know, crazy, so stay tuned. I'm gonna clean up this mess and we're gonna make a paper box. Okay, we're gonna make a box to house our chapstick or lip balm gifts. What I'm using, and these are not a requirement, they just make it a little easier is a scoring board. This was, I think, $10 on Amazon, but I know they have them at the craft store. This is a paper cutter. Again, easier. Some type of thick paper. You want a cardstock for this or 
a double-sided scrapbook paper that is thicker, right? Some scissors. I have curved and straight. Glue. The glue is important. You don't want Elmer's or anything too watery. What you want is a paper glue. And that's what this is. Actually, I got this at the Dollar Tree. But it's Bostick Multipurpose Adhesive. This seems to be working just fine. It also has a fine point to it. Um, I have a bone folder, not necessary, not a requirement. Like I said, this stuff here is just makes it easier for me. I also have a wipes because I'm a mess. And I just want to clean the point of that off. I've been practicing to come up with the formula here. So I'll leave the wet wipe over there. Here is the formula that I came up with. I took my item and I measured it. And I knew I needed a box that was at least a, a inch square, right? Because you're making a square box. So an inch square. So I said, okay, I need to go across at least four inches. Then I gave myself a quarter of an inch to glue the box together. So four and a quarter. Lengthwise, I wanted it at least four inches long. So I said, okay, my paper needs to be six inches at least. That's not quite four inches, but I made it six inches long. And I said, okay, I have an end to fold over one inch. And then up here, I have an end to fold over one inch. I gave myself an extra half inch to do one of those little flappy thingies. If you just wanna glue it shut, you can do it at that length, which is, it will be six inches, give yourself an inch here, an inch here, and it gives you four inches. I'm giving myself three and a half inches inside the box for that. I hope that makes sense. It's a formula. Um, trial and error got me there, let me tell you. And a pen in case you need it. So we're gonna follow my own directions, which are right here. I hope you can see that, let me check. Yes, let's pull it up closer to the screen. Those are my measurements. Okay, I'm gonna put it off to the side. I have this paper, which is really pretty. It has some gold foil. It was just out of a paper box, paper, scrapbook paper book. Um, mine goes here. Now, this is directional, which is fun as well. So if the box is gonna be upright like that, then I need this cut. Oops, I gotta cut that off, sorry. Let's go this way first. If the hole in it makes it a little longer, then it'll go through. So we're gonna go first our six inch cut, which is the top to bottom, the long way. Right? Six inches. And then, cause the box is gonna go upright like that. And then we're gonna go four and a quarter, four and three quarters. It doesn't really matter what your overlap is going to be. You're just gonna have an overlap. So that is gonna be my box eventually. Which side do we want on the outside? I think we want this on the outside. So we'll score this side. So that's it, that's my whole cut. Now we're gonna bring over the paper scoring and I'm gonna put it in this corner. My little scory thingy slides off like that. And on here, you've got measurements. One inch, two inch, it goes up to six inches across. This is a small one and the same down the side. But your grooves only go vertical. So I'm gonna say, okay, well this is the inside of my box and I'm gonna mark off at the one inch, the two inch, the three inch, and the four inch. That's the four sides of my box and my little flap for me to glue. I should do this twice to allow the things to dry, right? So where are we at here? I'm gonna do it twice so you can watch twice. Uh, so that's six inches and my four and whatever. It doesn't really matter on that. Okay, so we're gonna have two and we're gonna do one on each side of this paper. And the only reason, again, I'm using double-sided paper is it's thicker, it's cardstock. And I don't know what pound this is, but you want it thick. You stick it up here in your corner 
and you go to your one inch line and you pull it down. And this is why I like this paper scoring. It just gives me straight fold lines. You just wanna make sure you're in the right line because last time I was not. All right, so that's gonna fold this way. So then we're gonna do this one and we'll put the gold on the inside. One, two, and you just wanna make sure it's lined up and four. Okay, now we need to do our end flaps. So we're gonna turn it sideways and this is gonna be a little interesting because I'm gonna be scoring on this portion because I don't, it's not big enough. So we're gonna go with one inch. That's the bottom of the box right there, one inch. This is the top of the box. And I wanna give myself a little extra. And this is a trust the process situation here. So we're gonna go over to one and a half inches. And now we have determined that between these two lines, that's the inside height of the box. And then I'm gonna come over here to the half inch and I'm gonna score it there, right? We're gonna do the same thing on this one. So we have one inch, that's the bottom. Trust me, the trial and error was real, friends. One and a half and then half, okay. And that's it. All of our lines are scored and ready to go. So I will move the paper and I'm gonna show you how I fold this. So first thing we wanna do is get our creases folded and don't be too rough with your paper. It is thicker. If you're too rough with it, what will happen is it will split and then it won't look good, right? And we have this fold here. So I went on all of my creases and look, here is how the box then goes together. So then we're gonna say, okay, well this is the bottom of the box. There's my score line. I'm gonna come up. This is the top of my box. I'm gonna find my score line right here and I will do it again with this one. And then I want to fold that top crease. I'm gonna be cutting off some of this. Not yet. The first thing we're gonna do is we need to make four cuts on the crease line, up two. We're gonna start at this and we're only gonna cut it the one inch, right? So we're gonna go up and don't worry if it's not as straight as you want it to be, we can clean that up after. You just wanna make sure you stop right there and then you're just gonna have that little piece right there. And up here, we're gonna go from the end all the way to the fold line. Right, all the way. So this end is an inch and a half. And this is the top of the box, right? So if I say, okay, well my box looks like that, and this is the top of the box, that's the back, because that's where we're gonna have a seam, and this is the front. So what I'm gonna do is say, this is my back. You can wait until the end to do this, or you can cut these little flaps off now. I will wait till the end. So I'm gonna lay it down, and I know that this little flap here is getting glued. So we take our little glue, and this is one of the reasons you don't want over amounts of glue or too watery glue, it will warp your paper, right? So you just want to do that. And this is where I use my bone folder. I just kind of do that. And then I make sure it's not, I got some glue smeared out. And I wanna let that sit here and dry for a second. So we're gonna fold the second one. And we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna fold it and just on the crease lines. And this is my own pattern. It's not my own technique. I took my item and measured it for myself. Um, the, you know, there are plenty of videos out there if you need a different perspective of what I'm giving you. Okay, so 
It's all been pre-folded. We're gonna come down here. We're gonna cut up one inch on this end. This is the bottom. And this is the top. And this goes an inch and a half. Now, like I said, if you don't wanna make a flap to attach it, you only have to cut it one inch on each end. But I want a flap. I lay it here because it's easier, and that's my overlap right there. Like I said, you just really want a good quality glue if you're gonna go through the trouble to do this. Not that it's trouble, but you're, you know, you're putting some effort forth and you don't need it to be ruined. And then while that's drying, I may fold it this way just to make sure all of our little seams are lined up. This side may, this one may take a minute longer to dry because of the, of the, all right, well, my phone stopped recording. So, we're gonna pick up where we left off. We have a little bit of different, um, I have some different paper here and that is A-OK. -okay. So, we are good. Now, we're gonna cut it and glue it, right? This is a directional paper, so up and down. This is the bottom. We're gonna go around the bottom and we're just going to trim off these little edges. Nothing crazy except for the front edge. So this is the back, it has the seam. This is the front. So we're not gonna touch the front one. We're gonna do the front, the sides and the back. It just makes everything lay a little nicer especially if you're not perfectly square. And then the top of the back piece will cover any of our little imperfections, if you will. That's a little long. So we'll just trim it there. That's what I love about paper crafting. Honestly, it doesn't matter because you just cut it and make it fit. So we'll do one dot. One drop of glue, one drop of glue. This paper here is not quite as thick as this other scrapbook paper, but that's okay. And then we're gonna do one drop of glue here. Close it up, hold it. Make sure everybody is square, right? That's your big thing, are we square? Yes. And then we go down in here and push it all down. Oh, I do have a little overage on this end. I just wanna trim that up real quick. There we go. And that's good. We're gonna hold it down for a second and let the glue dry. On the bottom. And that's done. Now we have the top of the box. Remember, we have our back. The back has the seam. So if you wanna make your tab, you're gonna cut the back off where the seam is. That whole piece is gonna get cut off, okay? On the sides, we're gonna cut off the two flaps. We don't need these. On the sides. And then, you see how it's gonna fold over like that? But we're gonna trim the insides just to make it all tidy, nothing major here. And then I like to trim the top where it's going to go in. These are not designed to last forever. It's a gift box, right? So, if you don't wanna do the flap, you certainly don't have to. Just glue the box shut with your gift inside. Ooh. That does not wanna fit in there quite nicely, so we will we'll make it fit, right? I think it's this side. There we go. We'll make it fit. And 
there we go. Now, like I said, this paper is a little softer, so it's not quite as good. Here, we'll just do this. As the other paper, but that's fine. I thought it was cute, so I'm using it. There we go. There we go. Now we have our box, our three boxes for our three gifts. So I hope you enjoyed this little DIY that I have. Um, I will say, and I don't remember where it cut off, but the box measurements are my own. I, I did the formula for the box. Obviously, I did not create the idea of using scrapbook paper for a box. Um, but I did come up with these measurements specifically for the Elf and the Dr. Papa lip balms for a little Christmas DIY or fall as I'm using a fall themed little charm laden lip balm. So I hope you enjoy. Thank you.